Batteries are perhaps the most humble component in a smartphone. They let you do all kinds of things, be it making a call or sending an email, making sure your date doesn't cancel up on you on Tinder. But have you ever taken out the time and just thought about how do these things work? How does this little soup of, you know, gooey ions power up your phone? If you have, you have come to the right place because you're watching Elemental, a series dedicated to the smaller things in tech that make a much bigger impact on the world. My name is Shubham and if you want to watch more Elemental episodes, you can consider subscribing to our channel and hitting that bell icon so that you know exactly when we put out our latest videos. Now in this video, we will be talking a lot about volts, amps and watts. Now just so you know, volts are a measure of voltage. Amps or amperes are basically how we calculate electrical current and watts are a unit of electrical power. To visualize this, think of it as a water hose. Volts can be thought of as the water pressure in the hose. The current is basically how much water flows through the pipe and wattage is basically how big the spout's spray is. Great, now let's move on. Now, despite the diversity in battery types, be it, you know, existing in cylinders or blocks, all batteries work on the same basic principle. You remember Walter White from Breaking Bad making batteries out of Tupperware boxes and coins and mercuric oxide? Yeah, that's the basic functioning of a battery. You basically have a positive end or cathode, a negative end called anode, and an electrolyte which contains ions that power your battery. What are ions? Electrically charged atoms and molecules. They travel from one end of the battery to the other and produce current when they are connected to different components in a circuit, mostly through a wire. Now it is important to know that not all batteries are rechargeable. So don't try and recharge that non-rechargeable battery at your home because that might actually be pretty dangerous. Now rechargeable batteries use different kinds of chemicals like nickel metal hydride or NIMH or nickel cadmium. But we are mainly talking about smartphone batteries which use lithium ion or Li ion or Lion. Wow. Okay, I, I made the last one up, but yeah, lithium ion. Now, lithium ion batteries are particularly awesome because they have really high energy density, which basically means they can squeeze in more boom and pow per square inch. This means that you can squeeze in more energy in smaller form factors, which is particularly useful if you're trying to squeeze in a battery in a mobile phone. They also have other benefits like longer run times and also don't go through this thing called the memory effect. Huh? Yeah, batteries too have memories. You remember I talked about nickel cadmium batteries? Yeah, so they gradually lose their maximum energy capacities when they are repeatedly charged while being partially discharged. And then they tend to remember the lower energy capacity. Yeah, you're not the only one who's weird because batteries do have their own fair share. Anyway, lithium ion batteries do show memory, but it's not as dramatic as nickel cadmium batteries. So you can have zero battery left and even then you can recharge it all the way up to 100%. Now scientists went a step forward seeing the popularity of lithium ion batteries. And so they made lithium polymer batteries that contain an electrolyte gel so they can be squished and fitted inside a slim body smartphone. Now these batteries come in different capacities and you can find that out by calculating how much charge they can store. Charge is calculated by multiplying current that flows through a wire and the amount of time it passes through it. To standardize the affair, we use the amount of time as one hour. Now ampere is a unit of current. So you get milliampere hour or milliamp hour or simply MAH. And that's what MAH stands for. Easy peasy. Awesome. We know the terminology, we know different types of batteries, we know how a battery discharges. But how do you charge a smartphone battery? 
So see, there have been several leaps in the charging technology business. These days you have charging tech like Oppo's 125 watt flash charge or OnePlus's Warp Charge 30 or Xiaomi's 100 watt supercharge. Qualcomm 2 has its own standard, Quick Charge, which is more widely accepted. Now if you want to understand this, you might want to revisit that water hose example I gave earlier. It's alright, you can rewind, I'll just wait around here till you get back. <coughs> Sorry, you're back. That's awesome. Let's continue. Now most of these technologies are proprietary. So the specifics of what wizardry they do with their chargers or batteries are hazy. But it is pretty evident that they either tweak around how much voltage and amperage their chargers operate at or change the architecture of their batteries. Oppo specifically uses multiple cells in their batteries, which also increases the amount of time it takes to charge the battery. You can think of it as six batteries getting charged at the same time in a parallel connection instead of one. Pretty neat. Now while everything looks awesome for fast charging technology, there are certain downsides that we all might have faced at least once in our lives while using them. Reduced battery lifespan is one. Since these charging technologies operate at higher power levels, they also generate heat, which may be a little risky. Then there's the whole need for proprietary paraphernalia, like chargers and cables, just in case one bums out on you. Now you may have observed that most phones have battery capacities ranging between 3000 to 6000 milliamp hours. Why not go crazy and have like a phone that has 10,000 milliamp hours of battery capacity? This idea has been tried out by several smartphone makers. But the thing is, it makes a smartphone really bulky. And with smartphones, every single gram makes a difference to the consumer. Another problem is, if you have a large battery, you will also need to charge that large battery which means your charge time will significantly increase. It's also important to note that as we move on to newer, more modern processors, their efficiency also increases. This means that your chipset gets more powerful and at the same time sips through your battery instead of gulping it down. Now, if you have followed the news on smartphone batteries for the last few years, you might have come across the shortcomings of lithium-ion batteries. For starters, they are inflammable. Also, over time, these tiny tree-like structures called dendrites start growing in them, which hinders the flow of ions. Smartphone makers are now working on replacing this liquid with a solid electrolyte like ceramic and graphene. These batteries boast higher energy densities. They can also be charged much quicker and have a longer life. 10 years in some cases but they are kind of expensive. But we can expect the costs to go down as the tech becomes more popular. And that brings us to the end of this episode. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up button. If you loved it, show us some love in the comments. And again, new Elemental videos come out every Sunday. So subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon. And for all things tech, log on to gadget360.com.